welcome back to Mary Boo Comics. I'm your host, Laura, and this is my favorite co-host, my husband, Scott. So we actually have something special and extraordinary for you guys today. Something a little different if you've been watching the channel for a while. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so we actually were contacted by mm -hmm. a writer who has a title that is going to be released on a Kickstarter coming at the end of July. And he gave us a pre-release copy of the first three comics and asked yes. us to give a review. Now, the disclaimer I told him is that, as I've told you all, we believe in being completely honest. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to give us a, a preview or a copy of a book, we're going to be a little brutally honest. So he was okay with us being brutally honest. He said, listen, if you love it or you hate it, Post it for me. I would love to see your reaction. So yeah. I said, all right, let's do this. So Laura and I both read this book called Detonator. Um, it is written by James Parrish. Um, the art and I believe coloring was uh, Carlos, and forgive me if I mispronounce it, but I got Zamudio. I hope that's right. And um, I will start by saying this. So, well, maybe a little bit about James first of all. So James yeah. is an EMT with the fire department over in New York yes. in Brooklyn, and he's writing this comic book series. He's certainly releasing Detonator, and he's working on some sort of unannounced fantasy series that he has not told us about, but yes. maybe um, we'll get a chance to read that one too. It's very possible, and if it's anything like this, I will say this, James, I would like to read it. So Detonator, for um, just a little bit of a backdrop, it takes place on an island. But in short, the island's in turmoil, and um, we don't want to give away too much of the storyline because, of course, we want everybody to hop on that Kickstarter with James and yes. get this thing published and read it for yourselves. What I will tell you is that within the storyline, there is a hero yes. who is struggling with being a hero. And what I really appreciated about this was it touched on the other side of what heroes deal with. Similar to me, reminiscent to me, of the boys. Meaning, um, you know, we all see the wonderful things that are going on when the hero saves the day. And, and you hear about the, yes. you know, press and the, the news. And, and even kind of going into, like, the Avengers, um, you know, before they yeah. Civil War. Right, everything was like, "Oh, look, they saved the city. Oh, they saved this per this person. Oh, they saved this person." But what you don't hear about and don't see are the other people on the other side of the story. The guy whose house, you know, the the car got flipped over and landed on, or Tony Stark with his PTSD, you know, or the Hulk went rampant, you know, on a rampage through a village, or in the boys, you know, uh, A Train takes out your girlfriend on his way to score some drugs. Which, yeah. You know, back to the point. I'm not, I'm not going to ramble on this one, I promise. Being a hero is really cool, but there's a lot of probably um, morose thoughts of the people you can't save. You know, the okay. victims that are hurt as a result of the actions you have to take to do something heroic. And this character struggles with that. So to but, give it a twist. Oh, this is a cool twist. This is the cool twist. And yeah. honestly, the description of the book, which... James Parrish, I know you're watching this. I like your description, but honestly, it does not give your comic any justice. Mm -hmm. So in the description, it just mentions you have a best friend who sees his superhero best friend who is yeah. really struggling. And in order to inspire him, he becomes the villain that his best friend needs. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. But then you start reading it. Yeah. And basically... It's so I, cool. I don't know if any of you have ever dealt with a friend who had depression and you know how hard it is to kind of pull that person out. Um, I Not even to pull them out, just to be around them and to continue yes. being a friend. It's hard, period. But It's yeah. incredibly hard. So I can only imagine the lengths that you would go to to try and help someone like that. Mm -hmm. And it makes perfect sense why this best friend would be like, all right. I have tried all the friendly things. I've tried the words of encouragement. I've tried breaking him out of his shell. I've tried all these other things. And you know what? Let's just blow up a bloody building because maybe that'll get his attention. Yeah. And it is funny as all get out. The very first issue had me 
completely. I was yeah. definitely intrigued. It's a very fast paced moving comic book. So yes. if you read the description, you're like, sounds interesting. Read it. Trust me. It's, it's very fast moving. The only thing I will say is because the first one moves so quickly, I immediately wanted the second and third issues. So it's, it's not a bad thing, but yeah, if you're doing this on a weekly basis instead of as a set, you might be like, ah, going through withdrawals. Definitely. And the friend that, that steps up, it, it poses an age old question to me, which I thought was awesome. It's like, to what length would you go to to help your friend? Right? Yeah. But then take that to the, again, superhero level. And it's like, well, what would you do if Clark Kent was your best bud and he's in depressed? He's, he's, he's in a funk, you know? Yeah. What would you do if um, somebody with this awesome power decided that maybe they just aren't sure if they want to keep doing it and you knew that they had it everybody in else yeah. needs that to continue. Everybody else wants them. Everybody else needs their, their power, um, needs them to use their power. What would you do? What lengths would you go to? And, and this version, Detonator, goes to some pretty extreme lengths. Um, all that being said, there is an epiphany that happens in, within the first three issues. And it's fun, but also kind of like, um, I, it's, it's an eye-opening part where the best friend that's been trying to get his superhero depressed uh, buddy out of the funk says, you know what, I've been doing this wrong, and, and there's an apology pizza, which is now my new favorite thing. Yes. And Laura and I are going to try that next time that, you know, one of us... Messes is, up. Yeah, there, w there will be an apology pizza. Thank you, James. Definitely. Um, but it's such an interesting take on this friendship and the duality of being a Definitely. hero and the responsibility and, and also being a friend to that person. And being a good friend, not just like the yeah. friend in name, but... Then yeah. you're like, oh, well, I, I now have an opportunity to step into the spotlight. Right. I'm just going to take over. It, it's none of no, that. It is not. genuinely he does care it's about well his best friend. And I loved that. Really well done on the story. Now, artwork. So uh, we only have the digital copy, of course, to look at. Um, my opinion of it right off the bat was it, was it reminded me of a style that's a little more of... Um, I don't want to say caricature, but there's the realism style, and then there's yeah. this this version. I like it a lot because it portrays well. Yeah, it um, works. The panels, you know, the flow. Um, it also, with this particular, you know, subject matter, um, there are a lot of explosions, and there is a lot of um, movement even within the panels, and it, it it's easier to show that without it having to be so. Yeah, well, and I think it gives it a really lighthearted nature that I think is really yeah. essential because, yes, you could keep this really, really dark and surreal and realistic yeah. and, and delve into those depths of depression. And instead, yeah. it's like, no, let's have a bit of like tongue in cheek fun. Um, really cool. Yeah. It, it almost reminds me a little bit because it'll, at times, you will see some of the video games that, gosh, we all played once upon a time. The the artwork reminds me a little bit of those video games, which they yeah, they and they'll even include in the, yeah. in the comic. So it's just like a great tongue in cheek. That's on top what of I was going cheek. for. It's it's yes. kind of like that. Um, so the age before the super ultra realistic video games came out, it's yes. in that era, and I love that era, like Contra and stuff like that. Anyhow, and I may be way off. Um, Carlos, by no means is any of that a critique in a negative way. I just, it's a particular style of art, and I liked it a lot for this um, storyline. I think it yeah. fits really well. Um, the other thing that I will say is, now with issue, so it's introduced in issue number one, and it kind of continues in issue number three, is that mm -hmm. there is an underlying kind of story that's also going on beyond these, the relationship between the two best friends. Yes. So there is... Because they don't live in a bubble. They are on an island, but there's other people there's, around. There's another cast of characters involved that we haven't mentioned, but... There's more involved, but yeah. the, the one big thing that I will say overall. So the things you all do not know about my amazing husband. So my husband Ooh. has <laughs> an incredible best friend by the name of Sean. And honestly, I we get Sean and Scott in the same room, and the two of them become giggling schoolboys. And it is hysterically funny, because the two of them both riff off of each other 
and then they'll start quoting movies and then they start just like instantly laughing because they're also remembering the time once upon a time when like one of them went flying out of a golf cart this person did that <laughs> explosion yeah. i mean just it's crazy it when the two of them get together it you for me as an observer it is like the best moments because i just sit there with this humongous grin on my face and it's like watching the best stand-up comedy it's like go yeah. so when i was reading this i kept sitting there going all right what if scott was the one who was facing the severe depression and had gone through something traumatic and mm. sean is the one who kind of like walks into the room tries riffing with scott and can't get him out of it and i'm like i could almost slightly picture sean doing some of these things so there's yeah. a very realism there was a tie-in yeah that made it very real for us to the the, the relationship between the two gentlemen in the story but it was also immediately it reminded me of scott and sean yes so that was really really cool pros and cons so um pro for me storyline itself grabbed me from the beginning made Definitely. me want to continue and like as soon as i finished with the first issue like laura said i wanted to read the second one second one i wanted to read the third one um con would be if i'm waiting on these things to come out once a week or once every three weeks or whatever that time in between, I'm going to be like, mm, I, I wonder what, you know. I want more. Yep. Pros and cons for you. What do you got? Um, pros. Pro? So definitely like the very first couple pages hooked me. Um, the, mm -hmm. the comedy in the storyline yeah, was great. Comedy is a big pro. Yeah. Um, that was awesome. Um, I definitely like the villain best yeah. friend. He is definitely my favorite character. Really? Yeah. So just on a side note. I'm very curious to see what happens with the sister. And I think she yes. could very well be one of my favorite characters because I really like the interaction she's had with the best friend, best friend. so far. Yeah. Um, and at the very end of issue three, she kind of shows she's got some backbone there that I, I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that's going to turn into. Yes. So, yeah. It's a great dynamic between, because yep. it's the sister of the best friend. Yep. So sister, best friend, and our main hero. Yep. And there's kind of a an understanding of a relationship that exists between the three of them and then seeing right. how they interact that's gonna be did you have cool. a con of any kind though um my only con which actually is kind of a pro is oh, every so every single one of the issues because it was so much action and so fast paced i consumed them fast in yeah. a very short period of time so i think that's the only negative that i can think of is that i I, I, it felt like I was reading Lady Killer, where I just, I, I flew through it, and then immediately I'm now at the end of so, issue number three, and now yeah, I don't have more. There's some momentum to the story, and I think it fits with the story. Um, there's not a big, long soliloquy yeah. with somebody looking deep inside themselves and pausing on a balcony overlooking a city. There's That doesn't exist. But I like that, too, because it was also, I mean, it's a page turn. That's what you I would describe it as. Definitely. So... Um, in the end, we definitely gave it two thumbs up. Definitely. Most definitely. Like the writing style, like the art style, like the storyline itself, like the characters. We're back in the Kickstarter. We have enough, oh, 100%, <laughs> yeah. have enough uh, multiple things going on that we're intrigued to see where these little threads go, but not so many that we're like, we need a guide to figure out who's who yes. and what's what. So I think it's nailed it. Definitely. The Kickstarter. So right now they are in a pre-launch phase. Okay. So if you want to be one of the pre-launch exclusive individuals, so that means basically when they do officially launch it, you've seen it on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. where they'll basically give, sometimes it's a special bundle that's available to the pre-launch individuals, or you yeah. basically get first dibs. So they are in that phase. So if you want to pre add to the pre-launch notifications, I will have the link down in the description box. I also have the information about James Parrish. I have his website down in the description box as well. And um, yeah, let's definitely back the Kickstarter. And the other fun bit is we are going to have an opportunity soon to do an interview with James as well. So okay. you can get a bit more of a behind the scenes perspective yes. from him on, you know, what inspired him to write that story. Mm -hmm. You know, does he have his own Sean? you know, best friend that started all of this, oh. or if there was more behind the story. So tune in because more is coming. Yes. And any other final thoughts that you have? 
I don't really have anything to add except um, I definitely recommend it if you like you know fast paced buddy um, storylines yeah. action comics find it back it read it this was a great opportunity to read a and review a, a story for you all and I will share more fun stories about Scott and Sean another time you all have a wonderful day this is Scott and Laura from Mary New Comics and we'll talk to you all again very soon Thank you.